Hi there. In this screencast I want to give you a first brief introduction to Gradle, the powerful build system for the Java Virtual Machine. Let's begin. For getting started with Gradle, I created a project named Gradle Cast First. Let's use the Maven project layout and store the sources of our productive code at source main Java. By the way, we already create the packages of our sample app in the source main Java directory. Let's switch to the text editor and create a Java class and name it Banking Account. Define the package. Define the class. We add one property, name it balance, and create an according getter for that. Let's switch back to the terminal and create an empty file and name it build.gradle. Build.gradle is the default name for a build script in Gradle. If we run the Gradle command, Gradle complains that we neither defined any task to be executed nor defined any default tasks. For the first understanding, you can think of tasks in Gradle are something like goals in Maven or a mix of tasks and targets in Ant. To list all available Gradle tasks, we run the Gradle T command. As we can see, an empty build file doesn't offer any executable tasks. Gradle is shipped with a set of plugins. Since we want to build a simple Java app, we can apply the built-in Java plugin by adding apply plugin Java to our build script. If we run the Gradle T command, we can see that the Java plugin adds a bunch of new tasks to our build script. To create a Java archive, all we need to do is to execute the jar task of the Java plugin by typing Gradle jar. All tasks the jar task depends on, like compile Java or process resources, are executed before running the jar task itself. The newly created jar file is stored in the build slash lits folder and named like the root folder of our project. As a convention, the name of the project directory is used in Gradle as a name for the project itself. Each Gradle project has a version property. Let's set the version of our project to 1.0-snapshot. If we run the Gradle jar command again, you can see that Gradle Mark 3 of our 4 tasks which needs to be done for the jar archive are marked as up to date. This is an awesome incremental build feature of Gradle. While executing the Gradle jar task, Gradle recognizes that the input of our compiled Java and process resources task, our sources, didn't change and that the compiled sources are still available in the target directory. With these informations, Gradle can safely skip these tasks. Especially in projects with a huge code base, this feature can save you plenty of time. You can find the new created version jar file in the build slash libs directory. Let's test the just created banking account class. Our tests are stored in the source test java directory of our project. So we add the directory, we add the packages and now we write the JUnit test. Package, com, raspberry, gradle cast. Import the JUnit classes.
create the class banking account test and add one task method and name it new banking account has zero balance. When trying to execute the test task, Gradle can't compile our test class since we have no JUnitlib in our class path. The easiest way to fix this is to resolve the latest JUnit release from the central Maven repository. To get this done, we just have to reference the central Maven repository in our build file and add a dependency to JUnit for our test compile configuration. We use the latest version 4.8.2 and if we run the Gradle test command again or our Gradle test task we can see the test sources are compiled and the tests are executed. The result of our test is available as JUnit report and as you can see, it was successful. With just 11 lines of code, we can compile our code, assemble a jar, resolve the party dependencies for our tests from the central Maven repository, compile our tests, and finally run this, these JUnit tests. You hopefully get a first idea how easy it is to start with Gradle. Your feedback is appreciated. You can write a comment, drop me a mail, or send me a tweet. Bye bye.